Welcome back to another Just Disciple video. Today we are talking about the nine best theology books for beginners. And we have a great list of books coming up for you guys. Some of my favorites personally that, that I've read and put on the list. And, Ken, and I, I've picked out some of my favorites. And uh, These are all just great books. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't have to be a theological beginner to start off with these books. For sure, you can gain a lot from them just reading them. But a lot of these are great books for people who don't really haven't dug deep into some bigger theological concepts yeah. that theologians are talking about. This is a great primer, right? Because we're supposed to be maturing in our faith. And so people who need milk have milk. This is, these aren't really milk, I would say. These are probably somewhere along, along that perspective. But you grow in Christ over time. So th these are for a particular group of people who are at a particular place in their walk with Christ. And we wanted to offer some books that have been really helpful to us. Uh, so number one, the first book we're going to recommend is Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Such a good book. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the best. It's great for actually beginners and mature individuals. Mm -hmm. You can just keep going back to it and you're like, oh, yeah. so much depth into it. I've read the book multiple times. Um, if a Christian asks me, like, what's your favorite book on or your favorite Christian book? I will like 10 out of 10 always say Knowing God by J.I. Packer. It serves almost like a mini systematic theology yeah. or it's working through doctrine. Um, but it's very accessible, very easy to understand, and it really places a high view on Christ, a high view of God. Um, and I think it really sets you up for a great study of God and into other areas. So Knowing God by J.I. Packer, I've read it multiple times. It's a great book and definitely my most highly recommended book on this list. Yeah, and one of my favorite parts about that book is actually the introduction where he says that so many people know about him but actually don't know him. And you got to truly know him, and then he you know, unpacks that throughout the whole book. So it's just a phenomenal book. Yeah. So we can't say more about that book than we're actually talking about right now. It's but, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Number two. Book? Number two on the list. We actually have a little copy here. This book is All of Grace by Charles Spurgeon. This is an extremely accessible, very easy to read book simply on the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this book's written for people who are seeking salvation, uh, seeking to understand the gospel deeper. This is for people probably a little bit younger in their faith. And as you can see, it's a very short, very small book. Um, it's written very, very well. I would definitely give this book to anyone who's really trying to study the gospel, who is not really familiar with the concepts of, of the story of redemption. Yeah, especially um, if you, you had just gotten saved and you're like, I have this awesome experience, but you don't know how to articulate and understand it. Mm -hmm. This would be a great book for that. Absolutely fantastic. I, I cannot recommend J.I. Packer or Charles Spurgeon's works in general enough, and these, these are both really great books. So. Yeah. The third book is actually The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. Uh, in this book, uh, A.W. Tozer said, has this profound quote where he says, like, the most important thing that we need to know about ourselves is or what we think about God. So in order for us to know who we are and, and, and what's going on in the world, we actually need to know who God mm -hmm. is first. And then he unbacks all the attributes, the main attributes of God in this book. Extremely fascinating, just awe opening and, and inspirational for anyone who really wants to dig mm -hmm. deeper into the attributes of God. Yeah, really gives a high view of theology. What you believe about God is the most important thing about you. Yeah. It's a really great book. Yeah. Uh, the fourth book is more philosophical in nature. It's mere Christianity. So if you think like mm -hmm. uh, J.F. Packer's Knowing God is, is a primer, a basics of, of systematic theology in some sense, this was more in the philosophical side where he tries, uh, C.S. Lewis tries to unpack the Christian doctrine from a philosophical point for people who are either skeptical in their faith mm -hmm. or, or just becoming in their faith and are trying to figure out how do I argue against atheism and naturalism and all these things that are going against Christianity. So it's a fascinating book. Yeah. This is where uh, C.S. Lewis actually came to faith and, and started writing books like this. And this is his like seminal book. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most popular books by yeah. C.S. Lewis, probably one everyone would recommend to you. And uh, it's, it's kind of apologetics a little more than theology, but it gives you maybe a philosophical view of theology, which is a branch of theology. Yeah. It's really helpful as you're starting out. Uh, next, number five, is God's Love by R.C. Sproul. This is a book primarily about the love of God, which is a, it's a very important theological concept, and it's connected to so many other theological concepts and so many other attributes of God. And uh, R.C. Sproul kind of takes a really broad look at God's love and gives you a, a foundational understanding of it that's going to help you as you study God's holiness, God's justice. So theology proper, which is like a theological term for what we believe specifically about the character and nature of God, um, if you're looking for a foundational book before you study theology proper, God's Love by R.C. Sproul, 100% recommend it. 
Yeah, and, and one of the great things is that if you're going to church, you're always hearing messages about God's love and and in mm -hmm. topical sermons or maybe expository sermons. But he really goes in depth yeah. of what does this actually look like and how does it affect all of his character mm -hmm. and all of his nature, which is fantastic. Yeah, and I think you know there are a lot of books that are they're good. They talk about the love of God, but they're they're so broad that they don't actually provide any detail or any kind of helpful. Uh, helpful thought-provoking stuff within the book. This is not one of those. It's super accessible, easy to read, but it's also really deep. It's really deep, and I and I I love the book. I've I've gone back to it, so uh, really recommend God's love. Yeah. So so far we've done five books. The sixth book is uh, the Pursuit of God, another book by A. W. Tozer, and this is kind of the the two books that we've talked about, Knowledge of the Holy, Holy and the Pursuit of God, are probably the most famous ones. And really, the the reason why the Pursuit of God is so important is because. He, for, he goes off and says, hey, we need to have a wholehearted pursuit for God. But what ends up happening is that many times people try to pursue God without knowing what he's actually done for you. And he kind of goes through the whole mm -hmm. thing of how he initiated the process of salvation and how much he radically loves you and what he's done for you. And because of that, we get to pursue him and how we do that in the midst of the, our Christian living. So it's a fascinating uh, a book to, to be thinking about. Awesome. Book number seven is Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands by Paul David Tripp. It's one of our favorite books. One of, yeah. yeah. Ken actually introduced me to this book probably four years ago, um, and it's since been one of my like, top three favorite books of all time. Uh, very, very helpful. It's a little bit unique in this list. Uh, these are more theological books. Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands is less of like a theological and doctrinal work, and it's more of how do I counsel from theology, from Christianity. And so every single day, um, you're not only learning theology, but you're wanting to apply it to your life and you're wanting to disciple others, right? We've been called to, to disciple people in the kingdom of God um, and to teach people the doctrine. Um, Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands is a really uh, helpful book if you're wanting to put what you're learning doctrinally into practice, helping your friends and family members. And also it really gets to your hearts, right? So we know um, doctrine is supposed to affect us, not just in our minds, but in our souls, right? So we, we are affected emotionally um, and in the way that we live by the things that we're learning. This book is really fantastic. It's gonna help you put the doctrine that you're studying into practice. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic book. Mm -hmm. I, I, as Brooks was mentioning, when it comes to the counseling aspect of it, Right. Sometimes people just want to give you practical tips, but the reality is you need to know the nature of God and who he is and how that affects us. Right. In order to counsel someone properly. Without that, you, you miss it. Uh, so that's the seventh book. The eighth book is The Cross of Christ by John Stott. And this whole book is a primer on the atonement, on like penal substitution and atonement, what Christ has done and how because of the death of Christ, how are we now supposed to live in our Christian living? in our discipleship, in our mission for God. So it's a fantastic book in thinking about, now that I know what Christ has done, what am I called to do? But he unpacks the gospel, a little bit kind of like all of grace, uh, but just in, in a different aspect. So fantastic book from John Stott. Absolutely. John Stott, one of the greats. You know, yeah. We have one more book, but after that, we actually have a surprise number 10, because we couldn't keep it within nine books. It's a little we bit We could actually different. do like 20 books if we wanted <laughs> yeah. to. But There's so. tons of, I mean, Christians are one of the most prolific groups of people. I mean, they just write and write and uh, it's really fantastic. But if you're going to try to read all of the books on any topic in Christianity, yeah. gosh, it could take up your whole life. You know what I mean? Um, but book number nine, we actually have a copy of this one as well. It's the New City Catechism. It might be cheating a bit to call this a book. It's actually a catechism. <laughs> um, so a catechism is basically questions and answers that you're meant to memorize um, and so that you have quick answers, easy answers in your heart to questions about doctrine, questions about God, and questions about the Christian faith. Um, catechisms are extremely important. They're extremely uh, historical. So the church throughout hundreds and hundreds of years has used catechisms to teach new believers doctrine uh, and to teach children doctrine. Um, so the New City, New City Catechism is a newer one made by, I think it was made by Tim Keller, uh, Crossway, the Gospel Coalition, a few of those guys. Um, very accessible, very easy answers, and dang, it's, it's really amazing. So um, I know multiple churches who go through this. It's pretty simple. There's a question on one side, an answer on the other, and then there's some highlighted parts so that you can easily memorize it. And one of the best things about the New City Catechism is that you, there's so many resources built around it. So if you're looking for like a Bible study to go through with new believers, if you're looking for discipleship material, if you're looking for material for your kids, um, tons of it has been developed around the New City Catechism. So it's really great introduction to, uh, to doctrine and introduction to the Christian faith through, through catechism. Yeah, 
I, I got super excited before recording. Brooks actually mentioned this to me and I downloaded the app and the children's section, it has songs to every single one of these questions mm -hmm. and answers. So I, I just got really pumped because I was like, I could share yeah. this with my kids now. It, it's more systematic approach to, to being able to teach your kids doctrine and it's yeah. fantastic. I've taught children's ministry before at, at a church that I was a pastoral intern at and uh, we listened to the songs and went through the New City Catechism every Sunday. It was super helpful. You wouldn't believe how well the, student, the, the kids could memorize these questions to deeper doctrines like, you know, what is my only hope in life and death? They'd memorize the answer to that. You know, it's crazy. Um, and it's because the songs and the, just the easiness with what it, which it was written is really helpful. And then here's the surprise book. Uh, surprise book <laughs> number 10, even though I told you you're only going to get nine. Um, it's Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. So this is a little bit different as well. Or you're noticing some of these are a little bit unique um, yeah. from all the others. Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem um, is a pretty long book, and it's meant to be a it's like 900 pages. It's Probably meant to a be a more. reference, yeah. not really a, like a book you read straight through. Though I've known people who've read straight through it. I mean, I've read through <laughs> Systematic <laughs> Theology yeah, myself like... before, but I've I've been, <laughs> I've you know had to. But anyway, um, if you're asking questions about specific doctrines, so if you're thinking like. I'm looking for the best theology books for beginners because you want to study eschatology, for example, or something like that. Wayne Grudem's systematic theology is extremely easy to understand and very uh, scripture heavy. So it's a good book to go to if you're really asking questions about doctrine in the early stages. Um, you can kind of get the foundation from there. Um, I read through it in high school and it was really foundational for me as I studied doctrine more and more throughout, throughout university and seminary. Um, and of course, you know, with, with all of these books, you're writing pretty holistically, especially with this one, yeah. through so many theological issues. Um, you're going to want to think through these as well, biblically, because I wouldn't say that Wayne Grudem, I agree with on everything. In, and in most of these books, so there's, there's something we're always going to disagree on right. something, yeah. And But these people are writing really faithful, helpful works, yeah. and that's why Christians are so prolific, is because we're always trying to add value to one another and, uh, and seeking to go back to the Scripture, not to say new things or writing about a bunch of new ideas, um, but really to go back to the Bible Ask, what has God said about this? That's actually what systematic theology is. It answers the question, what does the Bible say about any particular topic for us today? So what does the Bible say about eschatology for us today? And, and so if that's what you're looking for, Wayne Grudem's is probably the most accessible, most helpful systematic theology that I could recommend um, for someone who's new to studying theology. Yeah, and just, so, just in case, if for some of you who are watching this and you're beginners in theology, Brooks just used the term eschatology, and you're like, what is that? We actually have some videos on that, but quick term, it's the end times, right? It's yeah, to study the end times, uh, but it is a fantastic thing. One of the things that I love about this book, Systematic Theology, is the simple fact that he gives all the biblical foundation, and then he also gives different varying viewpoints in Christian doctrine, in Christianity, that some people might be like, oh, this is how we believe yeah. about this or this. So he just tries to be as holistic as possible in that approach. And I found that very beneficial as I was trying to study and process yeah. the questions in it. Always super helpful to see multiple perspectives, yeah. even though I don't think Wayne Grudem ever hides his own perspective. No, absolutely. Not but in the I book. Yeah. He, I think he's pretty generous with perspectives that are not his own and things. It really get, giving good biblical arguments for everyone, what people believe, right? Yeah, Unless absolutely. it's heretical, then he's like, no, that's right. That's <laughs> face, Which we've enjoyed. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, those are your, your nine, actually 10 books, right, for you as a beginner. When you're thinking about what new theology books should I be reading so I can mature my faith, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Uh, we definitely enjoyed just kind of going back to some of our books that yeah. really grew our faith and matured us in, in our faith. And hopefully these books will help you. Yeah, we are actually going to put all of these books in a blog post for you guys. So if you want to go look through that blog post, there will be links to to them and then a little bit of detail about each of them. If that's helpful to you, we'll put that down in the description. Um, and you can go and look and purchase some of these books or find the descriptions, kind of see more about them, figure out which one is best for you to put on, on your next, next read list. Sweet. With that, that has been another video of Just Disciple. Hope you guys have a great day and God, God bless. bless.